It's almost here. In motion is Patton. It's going to be that trap play to Garber, you know, up the middle. That's a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Big Elks! Cooper Garbarino, 77 yards. We're closing in on the start of Big Elk football, which means Big Elk TV will be on the air before you know it. Wynn and Garza are the running backs. Jones under center. Austin, snap, turn, hand off to Wynn. Jaden piles toward. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. You'll be able to watch and see if Coach Maynard's brown and white clad Elks can continue their winning ways. Snap back, play action, lobs it toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. Tucker Garza. To get your business on the Big Elk TV screen, call 225-9696 or stop by our office at 220 South Pioneer. Throw balls far. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be all, end all, know it all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Cow with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. And a good Garrison Financial Friday out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Say what's up to everybody out at the Path to Miracles Golf Tournament out at Elk City Golf and Country Club. I'm sure there's a few listening. I wasn't able to find those clubs. Scott, Speaking of Scotty, he was quizzing me about some irons some new irons and i haven't been able to figure out what i did with the set before the ones i'm hitting now did i loan them out and i don't realize it i don't know i never could find them i should have texted him and told him i couldn't find them but i forgot so i looked and looked i thought they were in my i I thought they were in my trunk maybe they are in my trunk they're just buried further even deeper (laughs) i haven't been able to locate them yet anyhow it is Garrison Financial Friday. It's also a high school football scrimmage Friday. We'll hit some of that at the end of the show. There was some scrimmages yesterday between some big-time teams, dude. Did you see Xavier Robinson throw that guy from UConn essentially into the stands as he was running the football? No. Holy Moses. I was seeing highlights of the Heritage Hall quarterback. Andy Bass. Yeah. Yes. Heritage Hall in Washington went at it. It was Carl Albert, UConn. There was a bunch of teams there on Post Road last night. I will tell you what's going on tonight, especially right down this I-40 corridor, those 4A teams, Clinton, Weatherford, and Elk City. College football topic for today. What are the top five games that you are most excited about? It does not have to – the this list doesn't have to be just a cookie cutter – The five best games of the year in your mind. No, no. The ones that you are excited about seeing for whatever reason. It doesn't matter what that reason might be because it's your own personal list. You cannot be wrong because this is what you want to see. So text us in, 225-9698. Tell us the games that you're excited about seeing this year in college football. Thunder schedule was released yesterday. What are some of the matchups that you can't wait to watch? Team, players, whatever that might be. Uh, they've got eight network television games, 13 overall national TV games when you throw in NBA TV uh, with that. Do you think that number changes? Do you think that number will grow? We saw last year there was one on the schedule. It immediately got taken away when Chet got hurt. But then by the time it was all said and done, they had flexed two Thunder games at the end of the season onto national TV. So when that when, when we look back at that, specifically the number eight, which means TNT, ESPN, ABC, will that number be higher? With Does the NBA TV count? No, well, they've got five there, so that makes the 13 right. total. Yeah, I'm not counting them. I mean, will they get a TNT game later on in the year? Will they get a, you know maybe one of those right, ABC right, afternoon right. games yeah. gets flexed in or something like that? So we're at eight. What will that number be? Uh, what's your expectation? I guess this kind of goes hand in hand. 
but more importantly, what do you what do you what's the most important thing you want to see out of the Thunder this year? I'm going to give you three scenarios for the end of the season: playoffs, play in, or out. Which would you choose right now? And then the midseason tournament. I've sort of figured out what that is. Uh, Kinda. Yeah. I mean, at least I know what the format is. And so that uh, we can discuss that a little bit if you want to as well. Two two five nine six nine eight is the phone or the text line. It's two two five. 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We'll talk about any of that or whatever else is on your mind. Feel free to chime in. If you're going to a scrimmage tonight for high school football, tell us where you're going, who's playing. That'd be great to know as well at 225 9698. If you're outside the listening area one of these days, you want to stay in touch with the show, log on to kadsam.com, download the app. The app's got it all. It's got the Penny News, it's got radio, it's got Big Elk and Paragon TV. All of it right there at your fingertips, and it is free. By the way, speaking of Big Elk TV, we will be there tonight in El Reno for the scrimmage. Now, listen, this isn't going to be what you're used to seeing as far as the style of this broadcast. It's going to be more of a, more of a let's call it a preview show with the game in the background. How about that? Yeah, that makes sense. It's giving us an opportunity to test everything you know we'll still have replays excellent camera work we're not half a in it by any means but it's a scrimmage so there's not going to be a clock there's not i guess we could keep score everyone does in their head right you know, yeah we scored two touchdowns there yeah, yeah yeah so we could do that but it um it gives a, a little sneak behind the a little sneak peek behind the curtain to see what maybe we can expect coming up in a week exactly yeah exactly right we're just going to be kind of visiting talking about the season talking about the the team the other teams in the district teams around the state whatever it might be we'll just be visiting between the three of us you you daniel me games going to be going on we got interviews from kids that we got to shoot at media day that we can play shoot we might even grab an interview or two on the sideline who knows i don't know exactly like that okay never mind well, he don't like that well i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, that segment brought to you by Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be there. Like I said, it's six 30 is the scheduled time that could float around. So if you, if you tune in right at six 30 and there's nothing going on, be patient. It's just because the middle school took longer or what, you know, they're warming up, whatever it might be. Uh, so that, that's how that's going to work tonight on big elk com. How are you today, Jared? I'm good. How are you? Hey, I've got a question. So, by far, I shouldn't say by far, one of the things I really am missing about Sean Wilson not being here is the fact that every day when I would get here when he is, Mm -hmm. there's coffee because he would make the coffee. I thought Nathan did that. No. Sean did that. And you know how I know Sean did that? Because there's never any coffee right now. And Nathan's here and Sean's not. So, I'm going to give the nod to Sean. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think Nathan makes it. I he think makes he his a, own coffee. He has a cure because he has his own. Yeah, 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 yeah. He makes his own. That's what's going on. Yeah, correct. Yeah, he's making coffee. Just gotcha. His own coffee, his own special blend of brewer coffee. The brewer coffee. So anyhow, his own brew. So today, once again, I realized, oh crud, I didn't go make the coffee. But inside the refrigerator mm-hmm. in the break room mm-hmm. hides. A jug of sweet tea. Yes, that's from the meeting the other way, other day. I've been yes. making Arnold Palmer's like no Have other you really? with the lemonade and the unsweet. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't I actually realize this yesterday that it was in there. And it got to me to thinking. Since we got the top five list of college football games you can't wait to see. <laughs> Let's make it. I'm going to go to, it's three too few or can you, you want to go five? What's your, your favorite drinks? Well, what do you mean drinks? It can be anything. Any drink. Any drink. What are your top five? Like sweet tea is 100% one of my favorite five drinks in the world. Sweet tea is good. Sweet tea is good. Man, you're putting me on the spot. I think I, I would mean, go. I mean, are we Are, I we, think are goes, we including absolutely. the adult beverages here? Absolutely. Okay. I think I would go sweet tea five. Water, four. 
Dr. Pepper 3, mm. cold beer 2, and milk 1. The top two could go back. Wow, could, okay. Wow. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure here. Favorite drinks. I'm trying to think, like, when I go out, yeah. I mean, you're putting me on the spot. I do like straight up milk. Oh yeah. Ice if cold I am, milk. if I wake up in the middle of the night and I am just parched, I'm more inclined to grab the jug of milk. Do you drink it out of the jug? Yes, I do. Yeah, so do I. Wife hates. But me. I'm the only one that drinks milk in the house. So what does it matter? Yeah. It's almost like just having a big old mug. Like we're all family here. Come on. Um. I like my beer. Dr. Pepper is good, but it has to, you know, I've noticed like if you go somewhere and you get a Dr. Pepper, like, well, this is Dr. Pepper. Something's not right. Then when you get home and you get one from a local store, isn't it something different about it? Something about Dr. Pepper just tastes better here. You know, they, al- they always used to say, many, many people in town used to say, and I think I'm, it was because of the RO system at Chuck's, that Chuck's Dr. Pepper was the best Dr. Pepper you could get. And I think it had to do with the, the RO system and the way it all kind of worked together. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm compiling the list here. I got I got you. I'm, I'm talking it out loud. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting some heat for my water choice. Listen, there's times where I love ice cold water. Okay, I'm ready. All right, go. Do I have to put them in order? I did. Oh, darn it. Okay, I will go number five. This is all over the map, so just bear with me. Uh, it has to be lemon lime Gatorade. Uh, the, the, the yellow yellower, Gatorade. Yeah. It has to be that one. Yeah. Any other flavor, I'll pass. Well, I won't pass on if I'm thirsty enough. But that's the best. That's the best. Number two. So that's Uno. That's your favorite? Oh, I'm sorry, five. That okay. was five. I'm sorry, five. Four will be, let's go with Dr. Pepper. Okay. Yeah. Three is milk. Two is a good old Jack and Coke on the rocks. Oh, wow. You can see, yeah. I'm putting these in order. Yeah, I was going to say, number one, I know what it's going to be. Ice cold beer. Oh, oh, oh. Which one? Uh, the kind that goes in my belly. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 uh, what brand Don't is do that? that. Come what on. brand is that, Jared? You know what's funny? Why aren't you saying the brand? Well, because everyone <laughs> is so politically charged. If I say a wrong brand, uh, they're going to throw know me what, to the stockades. Hey, you already said bring over all the Bud Light yeah. well, so, to it was put funny in your that fridge. The other day at um, my kid's practice, us dads were just kind of sitting by the fence, or not sitting, standing by the fence talking, and one guy said, man, it's hot out here. I got some beer in my cooler. I'm like, oh, yeah, what you got over there? He said, oh, I got a, it's a new brand, man. It's really good. I'm like, well, what is it? Well, it's Michelob Ultra Grape. What? I said, and I get ripped on for drinking Bud Light? <laughs> You're over there with grape juice? <laughs> I think you make a fine point. I didn't know they had grape. He said, oh, it tastes great. It's really good. When it's I bet hot. it does. Like, I bet it does. I loved Mary. Kool-Aid as a kid myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good night. Just go ahead. Just rip the Band-Aid off and go get yourself a White Claw, okay? <laughs> Don't fancy it up by calling a Michelob Ultra grape. High noons were out at the store. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anywho. Couldn't find a Truly in wasn't town. wasn't prepared for, our, for drink conversation. It today. literally just happened. Like, as I took a it's drink of that. Good. Now, Scott may have the best answer. OPB. You know what that stands for? <laughs> Other people's beer. That's the best taste of beer. That's, that's, that's actually true. a fair point. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, I've been to. I've gone. to Others uh, are free. Yeah. Are, are the best ones. I've gone to a uh, uh, a friend's house at a pool party, and hey, bring the kids over again. And so, what do I need to bring? So I just bring your own drinks. That's all we ask. You know, BYOB. So I packed up my cooler, and on the side of my cooler, my little soft cooler. Yeah, I always have koozies and stuff. Well, I remember this guy. He gave me a hard time. We we had dinner one night together at Friends. Of course, I got Bud Light. He gave me a real hard time about it. So my cooler's full of Bud Light. I'm like, well, he's going to give me whatever. So I reach in the side, and I pull out a Dallas Cowboys 
koozie. I said, now what's is going to offend you less, the, the <laughs> Bud Light or the Dallas Cowboys koozie? And he just started laughing. And then a little bit later, he goes, hey, do you mind if I bum one of those oh, Bud Lights? All of a sudden, like, you oh, want one of those Bud Lights. if it's free and someone else's cooler, you want it. Funny how that works. <laughs> yeah, there's another vote. Ice cold Keystone out of my buddy's Yeti cooler. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Mont is right on top yeah, of it. Yeah. Got to vote for a club special. Listen, there's times in life where there's nothing better than a, a, a it's such such a refreshing drink. Where did I have that? Somebody made one of those for me. I can't remember where I've had that. Hopefully, Twin Hills for you. I mean, just somebody made them. Was it you? I don't, think I don't so. remember who. Somebody made that for me. Here's a club special. I know that uh, at one point years ago, our man Digger coaxed the recipe out of the guy in the men's room at Twin Hills. Yeah. To make that specific type of, you know, because club specials taste kind of different in a lot, you know, different ways. Mm-hmm. You can make them. And he was able to commandeer that recipe years ago, decade or so. Well, I'll tell you what, it's hard as it's going to be this weekend. A lot of drinking of something. Yeah, tough break yesterday at our house. I turned on the... um, So when the trampoline flew in the pool... Yeah. I turned off the... (laughs) Still funny to me. I turned off the the pump Uh because there was so much mud and leaves, and I was like, let's let it settle. Our little robot guy will pick that up, and then we'll be fine. A little water Roomba. Oh, my gosh, and it was. It was so clear. I turned on the pump. And I forgot to uh, consult Will, and I should have backwashed it first. So then now all of a sudden it's cloudy again. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" But Pool, man. I don't know if it's. I've worth heard. It. Uh, yeah, is it worth it? I've heard there's a. There's a I lot haven't of, decided yet. A lot of nightmare, nightmarish stories. Ooh, that about looks pools. good. I'm still making a Modelo my- Chilada with limon and salt. It's good. Yeah, I mean, if, if you had my wife on this conversation, she she loves getting the um, what do you call it the sloppy dosekis mm-hmm. at the old restaurant mm-hmm. out east of out town. Out east of town here. Yeah, she loves. Does she get salt and lime? No, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm, yep. I skipped the salt. I'll take yep. the lime. I actually had one of those uh, dosekis mix. Or- I had one. Somebody left it at our house at the pool party one time. The salt and lime. The salt and lime wasn't bad. Pretty good. Put it on a chilled glass. See, that's good. I just drink it out of the can, but pretty good. Anyways, good stuff. No, you getting... excited about tonight? Oh, absolutely. What do you expect to see? Anything? Do you expect to see a lot? That's the thing about scrimmages. You no. don't. You're not going to see the no, whole playbook. And you know, coach alluded to that a couple of weeks ago. You know, you can't really divulge a lot, even in preseason. But sometimes situations call for it. But I'm excited to see. I think we're gonna. I think I know what we're gonna get with the defense, but the offense, there's gonna be some changes, right? See, I'm the other way. You want to see the defense? Yes. I well, think good. I mean that one's excited for the other thing. I, like I think it. there's got that. I think there, that's where. I mean, obviously Levy. It's hard to replace that type of guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we saw Jaden. He he's capable. You know, Garberino. You you lose a little bit of the. Of speed of you know what Cooper Patton had, but there, there's guys there. You know Tucker's back from his knee injury. We saw a glimpse of him before he got hurt last year as a freshman. He looks so much bigger. I really, just, I see him a, a little bit. Just he looks big. Eh? He looks like he'd been in the weight room. So if he can get back to where he was, you know, speed wise, you know that it's still potent that way. But defensively, where you know, the secondary is almost going to be, outside of Garbarino, everybody's going to be new, maybe to their spot. I mean, we saw Cole a little bit at corner here and there. You know, will it be him who 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 steps up and plays those secondary spots, I think is going to be really important. You know, yeah. and, and you know, linebacker-wise, there's some guys that played some. Have to replace, you know, Sammy. To me, was the heart and soul of that defense for a couple of years now. He's gone. You know, Cat showed signs. Robertson showed signs. You know, there, there's guys. Alonzo, we've seen him flash a little bit at, at certain points. And then on the defensive line, uh, I think a guy that has a 
not not a target on his back, but but a guy that needs to show up is Blake Blake Red. He, he needs to be able to do what we saw from Joseph Daly or what we saw from Gage East. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We need him. The Elks need him to be a guy on that defensive line to to disrupt and cause havoc and. You know, it's a, it's kind of his turn. So the, I, I, that's the part that I want to see. I think the offense will be fine. You know, uh, because they've got a miss a, a mix and match of of offensive line guys that have played a bunch. It may not be, you know, all five starters quote unquote back because Aiden and and Logan on the right side there are gone. But Tate Shelton coming back from a, from you know broke his leg there. He was playing a bunch before that happened. You know, um, Riley. Uh, Boyd, Carson Price, Holden Dixon. There's guys there that have played a bunch of football. So you just got to figure out kind of, you know, wh- how that gels and how that meshes. And so that's the part that, you know, we, I think we had this, this discussion last year going into the season where the Elks lost literally everybody outside of, I guess, maybe Garbarino and a little bit of Patton that had touched the ball. You Dude, know, with Drake and Mason and Corey yeah. and, and Day Day were all gone. But you felt good about it because you had the big guys back, and it's kind of that way this year. You got you still have the big guys back. You know who plays quarterback? I know, I know that's probably ninety five percent of the people that tune in tonight. That's what they want to see. Who's going to trot out there at quarterback? Will mm-hmm. it be Catch? Will it be Logan? It'll be. I think it'll be a mixture of both until one of them kind of asserts themselves. So yeah, there's there's question marks. There's no doubt, but. Unlike some other years, I think those question marks are at least able to try to be answered with guys that we've seen get time, not just thrown into the fire right off the bat. Yeah, and then we've talked about that, about how those guys that you know you had a deep bench last year, they got some big wins, allowed them to get in. So I yeah, I'm anxious to see how the young ones do. I mean, it's kind of a repetitive answer for every year, but I, that's what I'm looking forward to. You know, sustaining that success. That's that's the key to a successful program. You can't have these lulls and, and then the interest level dips off and all that. So this is a very key year. You know, the last two years were awesome. You know, there was a lot of unknown going into last year. A lot of people didn't know. A lot of people wrote them off thinking, well, because everything you mentioned, day has gone, price is gone, all them. So they can't be as good as they were last year, and then they go and do what they did. Now there's expectation. So I'm anxious to see how those young guys who step into those roles handle that expectation to maintain the standard that's been set first by Meadows and then carrying it on by Maynard and, and keeping it going. Yeah, and, and the, the depth I don't think will be quite as, at least early, won't be quite as strong as it has been. Mm-hmm. You know, that was one of the secret sauces of last year was being able to have guys playing offensive line and other guys playing defensive line and not having to go both ways. Um, You know, on the text line, you know, will it be Logan at quarterback? Defense needs cash to play linebacker. I think that's a, I think that's a consideration for sure. You know, that uh, as much as, you know, we saw him run the football from the quarterback spot a couple of different games, you know, and kind of toward the end of, of blowouts or whatever. The one, the thing that popped w- with Catch last year was playing linebacker. And I think he was the forward tough hit, I think, in Barbara Dyson winner like three times. Yeah. You know, and, and he packed a punch. And with Sammy gone, that that's a spot in the defense that needs to be replaced for sure. You know, that's, you kind of took that for granted, right? For the last three years, like, oh, Sammy will be there. It'll be fine. And now with him graduating, somebody's going to have to be there. And mm-hmm. Cat sure look like it's good a good um, candidate as any to to try to fill that to fill those shoes that yeah. uh, Sammy left. So uh, it's it's going to be fun. I like, you know, it, it's easy to say, and maybe coach speak at times of it, but the truth of it is, you have four weeks, four games. And the Elks are almost kind of lucky in that way to where they can play those four non-district games, boom, 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 because of where where Western Heights situated on the schedule, they can play all four non-district weeks. 
then take the first week off at just the way the schedule sat. And the next thing you know, you travel 25 miles east and, and see what you got and try to win on a place you haven't won in damn near 30 years. That's a name. Reese Burton is a name that I can't wait. He's If we started picking out dudes I want to see that we really haven't seen a lot of yet, he's way toward the top of my list. I want to see what he – yeah. I'm ready to see what some of those guys can do out there on the field. Four. Sure. Oh, there you go. I got it from two different people, that name. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's going to be fun. It is. It starts tonight. 6.30-ish. I'm going to say ish. Just depending on how the yeah, middle school stuff goes. Yeah. And- middle school starts at 5. We won't have that on Big Oak TV. We'll have varsities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen. Middle school, you'll get I'll your be, time. I'll be yelling during the middle school game. <laughs> yes. Where are you going, Wyatt? What are you doing? <laughs> I thought you were going to hit somebody. We'll be back. Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside the specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. The Skinny on Sports. This is one of the most awesome experiences of my life because I'm getting in trouble right now. I can't believe it. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal. It's a Garrison Financial Friday. Scotty G out playing in the Path to Miracles golf tournament this morning. Everybody uh, is. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. is. Everybody. We're not. us. We're not. It's our own fault, really. I mean, is we, should what have, it is. we should have found a team, right? We should. Have. I had a team. You had a team? I could have played. Chose but not to? Chose I thought we to. were going to be gone. Okay. And we were still going to be gone until last night, but now we're going to go to the scrimmage and then come home. Uh, oh, you're not coming? You're not going to? You're coming to go home? Are you going to ride with us? Well, you're going to? I'm riding with my wife. Oh, okay. Because we're going to leave earlier than I thought y'all were going to. Okay. I'll probably ride home with her because I won't have a car here to get home unless y'all want to drop me off. Actually... Y'all might have to drop me off because the chances of her sitting through two scrimmages are probably not not, not great. With a heat advisory until 9 o'clock. Probably not That's great. That's another thing. I wonder how long, if that will take have factor into how long, how long they go. How long they go. I'm going to go with Slim and none, and Slim just left the building. Are the her, cha- her are the chances are hanging out through both scrimmages. Anyhow, I, she, I, I'll be honest. She's surprised me before with some things. She might surprise you here and stick oh, yeah? around. What was Who that? Knows? No, I mean just like you know, just seeing her and like, uh, what, okay. Uh, here's one. Uh, when I needed a camera, and I stopped through Weatherford to grab it from you because you were done with your. Oh game, yeah, yeah. And she, she was just there, there with you. I thought, well, your wife's here. Yeah, we were gonna we were heading on to a different basketball game gotcha. that she wanted to go watch that night. Leedy and uh and uh Arnett. Oh yeah, you That was a great game yeah, too. That was yeah. a fun game. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Scott. He will be a full he'll do your full financial planning. He'll shop the open market to bring you the best value on your life insurance and your investments. He can manage those investments. Or if you're one of those people that likes to kind of dabble in the markets, likes to kind of see what's happening and, and participate, but you just don't know quite how to get going. He'll charge you hourly to build you a plan that then you can go ahead and manage and, and kind of do your own thing. Scott at SoonerWealth.com, 124 North Main here in Elk City is his office location. All right, so we kind of flipped the script on the show here today. We put the third segment in the first segment. You want to go down the list or you want to stay with the second segment, which is my, uh, I would rather do this one. Go for it. 
What are the top five college football games that you are excited about that you can't wait to watch? It doesn't have to be Ohio State, Michigan. Cookie cutter answers. What are the top five that you personally are excited about? In any order? I put it in order, but I also came up with the topic and forgot to email you the list. So you can just kind of, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about a few that I didn't put on there. Oh, good one. Okay. And then give you a chance to kind of think about what order you would like to put yours in oh, okay, cool. as I go. So go there's a definite theme with my list. At least I was trying to make a theme, and then it kind of got blown out of the water because the Civil War and the Apple Cup are at Oregon and at Washington. So that doesn't excite me nearly as much as if the Civil War was at Oregon State and the Apple Cup was at Washington State. Makes sense? Absolutely. See where I'm going there? Yep. So that's there, there's a definite theme with that kind of thing on my list. I put it number five, a, a, just a game that I can't wait to watch because I think this will – because I think this may be the only time Georgia is tested in the regular season. Georgia at Tennessee is my number five most ex- the game I can't wait to watch in the college football season. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I'm just afraid by the time that rolls around, Tennessee might have a couple losses notched on them, and Georgia's just Georgia, you know, dominant. But if, if it's not, then yeah, I'm with you. I I feel like Tennessee might take a step back, but. I hope not. Um, on the note of games that aren't on my list, but that I'm looking forward to, uh, I mean, the big ones do. I do look forward to the big ones, like yeah. Ohio State, Michigan. I look forward to that because they are a lot of them. In, a lot of polls are two and three. Um, and the, we've in the last, I mean, when they're both undefeated and play each other, it's just pinnacle best college football. Uh, Red River rivalry. I mean, who doesn't look forward to that every year? You know, there's those cookie cutter answers, but hey, they're my answers. I like those games. But others that I'm really looking forward to. My, did you start five? Yeah. Um, because of a game, it reminds me of a lot. Uh, when was that? A couple of years ago, Oregon and Auburn played each other, and was it Jerry World and uh, Oregon upset Auburn and Aub- or is it the other way? No, Oregon upset Auburn. Is that right? No, Oregon fell apart. Did Auburn end up beating them? Bo Nix. Yeah, yeah. Bo Nix led Auburn back Auburn, that's right. before he went there. Yeah. That's and, right. And then um, that felt like that broke Oregon season right there. Like, oh, or not just Oregon, the entire Pac-12. Because mm-hmm. they were the only hope that the Pac-12 had to get to the playoff. So a game like that, for me, is Florida State LSU. Because oh. one – this is, is this supposed to be Florida State's back? Everyone talks Texas is back. You kind of hear that same rhetoric with Florida State, although they've won a title more recently than Texas. Point is, you heard that going towards the end of last year. They won the Cheese at Bowl versus Oklahoma on a field goal, and you're like, oh, this is Florida State's year. This year they're going to contend for the ACC. They're going to beat Clemson. This is their year. They're back. Well, this game right here, they can't beat LSU. Could that break them? I mean, could that break – the ACC's chances could, it, but that could break Florida State's chances of being back and being contenders, and because we everyone likes LSU to be, have a chance to win the West. So that's my number five game. That one, I think, is going to be athletes and studs all over the place, and two for the intrigue I just spoke of, of what it could mean for either team, win or lose. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Florida State losing has any effect on Clemson just because Clemson has been Clemson. Yeah. Unlike the way, like you said, Oregon's that year, and it really did. We didn't talk about the Pac-12 again until Oregon was back up there, and then they lost Arizona State. Right. Yeah. That. But yeah, that's that was my next one. That wasn't one of these. Like last time we'll see him games was LSU Florida first weekend. Number four, I've got OU Texas just because it's that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that game. If you've never been, you have to go. If you love college football, you absolutely have to go down there and see that no matter who you root for. It's just something that you'll nobody else has it. So that's my number four. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Like I said earlier, yeah. he, he, those are those cookie cutter answers. That, but they're answers. They're they're in on the text line. All the traditional rivalries. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why they're fun. This one is a traditional rivalry. USC at Notre Dame. Hmm. I'm just. I want to see that. I, I just want to see that game. I am more of a Notre Dame believer than most. I think Sam Hartman is an incredibly large upgrade at the quarterback spot for Notre Dame. And they've got Ohio State at home, and they've got USC at home. And if they're able to squeak by the Buckeyes, this is going to be a massive game. It's going to be big anyway. Um, You know, Caleb Williams traveling on the road, you know, October, so you don't really know what the weather could be, and maybe a maybe a snapshot into what's coming for USC as they move to the Big Ten and getting into those you know weather games at whatever time of the year. Uh, but I'm just I, I'm excited to see that game uh, to see Sam Hartman if he can just expo- exploit Alex Grinch's defense. Yeah, well, if we're talking uh, again other games outside of my list, uh, I. Not so much USC at Notre Dame, but um, USC at Oregon. Mm-hmm. That is big. Um, my number four was just because I think it makes for great, almost reality TV, Colorado at TCU. I had Colorado. I had somebody on, on my phone. Can't wait to see Colorado and Coach Prime. Yeah, yeah. Sanders at the national runner-up. Again, answer some more questions. Is Colorado is just the presence of him and who he's brought with him make them a little bit more relevant. And then what's TCU got coming off that incredible run last year? This is a first really big test for them. And, again, it just – I mean, how many times are we going to see Coach Prime on the sideline on your TV? They might as well put a box in box, put him up in the corner. Yeah. Just because it's it's Dion, right? So, that's for me. And him back in the Metroplex, you know, back in the Dallas area. I'm sure he has fond memories of that area. So, what do you got on number uh, three? Number three is – Another um, kind of an offshoot game, uh, Oregon at te- uh, Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. Texas Tech, a lot of people like them as maybe a dark horse in the Big 12. A nice year last year. Looks like they finally found their coach. They've been searching for it since uh, Kingsbury. So, And then Oregon, uh, the not the favorite in the Pac-12, but a contender. Maybe uh, I've seen a lot of – I think they're preseason ranked two. I'm not mistaken. So, long road trip for Oregon and a chance for Texas Tech to prove that they actually are relevant. I won't say contenders. Maybe contenders in the Big 12, but see if they're relevant. It's a different animal. I mean, Lubbock's a different – I mean, it's totally different. Oregon's going to go down there and go, what is this place? I agree, and that's why the Big 12 should be – we should write them a harshly wor- uh, worded letter because at number two, I I actually have two games. And for Texas not to be going to Lubbock in their final season is a travesty. An absolute travesty for them not have to go on the road at night to Lubbock. Well, they're protecting them. Like physically, I hate they're that they, physically protect because they might be. not get out of there. I hate that they're not going yeah. there, but I have them that game, and then also Texas at TCU. TCU seven and three in the last ten years against Texas, so the, kind of those last you know Southwest Conference games for the Horns. Uh, Baylor not quite as much for me. I, I I like the the TCU domination of Texas, but then also I really wanted it when, when I first thought about this list. And making it, I was thinking Texas at Tech would be awesome. But then I remembered, looked up, and I, I was pretty sure it, that game was in Austin. Sure enough, it is. But I've got those kind of Texas finishing off those rivalries with those two schools as my number two. I got really traditional here at number two, but it's Army Navy. We got that on the Dakota. Said it's always my favorite Army Navy. Army Navy doesn't matter what their records are. It is the the show on that particular Saturday. It's the game. Wherever it's played at, it's you know I I may it's appointment watch for me. I don't care what the records are. It's it is what it is. Here's an interesting one on the text line: LSU at 
A and M. Last game could that be for the the West? Yeah, my outside game, one of the I, that I consider is LSU at Bama. Yeah. Could that be you know for the West, and could that be kind of our you know I got like questions I like to get answered. Is that is Alabama going to say no? We're not done yet, right? Or is it? That's the game people go. That's when everybody realized it's Georgia's conference. Alabama's down. Is this the beginning of the end of Saban's tenure? Right. You know, there's always kind of like okay, that you know, you just see it. It, it, it they just look different. LSU looked better. Da da da. Or Alabama turned around and said, "We're still Bama. We're all tied, and we're going to roll them up." So. All right. Number but that's one. An outside game. Number one. I think we probably have the same game. Because it has not been mentioned yet. Bedlam. Yep. And I think for all the same reasons. Potentially last one for a very long time. Outside of a bowl game or something. Well, and it's way more than that. Because here, I mean, what is that? 93, 18, and 2, or what, 7, or whatever that record is, all time. Guess what? That doesn't matter near as much unless Oklahoma wins this one. Because as much as uh, you can always say all-time scoreboard with the record, Oklahoma State fans can go, yeah, we've still got scoreboard. Yeah, we still – you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was just like what we saw from Texas and Texas A&M when Justin Tucker first became a legend – by winning that Thanksgiving Day game at Kyle Field with a basically a walk a walk off field goal in the last we've seen between those two. Now that's going to change, but at the time you didn't know that, and at the time it felt like it was going to be forever till they played, and it has been. That was like 2009, 2010. Last time they played, it's been a long time. I've had two kids since then. <laughs> yeah, and so, and it. I mean. The conference got it right. It was supposed to not like they had to change anything because it was time for it to be. But the fact that it's in Stillwater to me makes it even better. And so, yeah, I, 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 it's the game that I can't wait to watch more than any of them, just because of what the the, the ramifications are within this state, just in, in in all that. And hopefully, with the schedules that they both play, you know, the game's a little earlier than probably you'd like it to be. Uh, early November instead of later November when we would know for sure but with the with the weaker schedules and you know lots have been talked about that and, and it, it's funny because it's we, we talked about OU's week schedule since it came out basically and then when you had that to mirror what the what the SEC was going to be you could compare them and go oh my gosh look how much easier this is mm. in theory yeah but I think now that it's time to kind of start thinking about you know predictions and over unders and how many games are they really going to win? It's starting to occur to everybody that Oklahoma State's might even be easier. They don't have to play Texas. Yeah, no. I don't think they, they don't play TCU. You know that's that's uh both teams. What I'm saying is by November the fourth. Both teams could have really sterling records, and that could be a really big game. And you know what? For the last 15 years, that's what this game, the final iteration for a while, deserves to be. Because this has been one of, if not the most entertaining series going. These games are oh, yeah. always fun. They're always a blast. Yeah, they don't play TCU, Tech. Now they get Kansas State at home. That's the, you know. But I'm just telling you, Friday night game at home yeah. against Kansas State. That's winnable. So that's winnable. that's an easy choice for me. Is Bet, uh, Bedlam? Yeah, me too. Everything you said, absolutely. Question on the text line: um, What's an upset we could look forward to? Kind of like a when Appalachian beat A and M last year. Who later we figured out A and M wasn't really good, you know. But or Appalachian beating Michigan. Um, I have one. I don't know if we want to. Yeah, I'd call it an upset. How about Tulane at Ole Miss? Yeah, maybe not would quite that, on the would, level, but yeah, I get you. You see, see yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, Ole Miss is thinking this is Tulane, you know. But do people? I mean, they're ranked. A lot of people have them ranked low twenties. So, so with Ole Miss, 
Is that an upset? I don't know. You see any on, I mean, I haven't studied this as much. I'm just looking at a list of games and stuff. What's Boise got? Do they count the? I mean, they they've been good. Then they, I mean, even it no feels one, like, no one's shocked when they win. That's it. Even though they've fallen off the map, sort of, they've still been going like eight and four, nine and three. They just haven't been, you know, way up there like they like they have been in the past. Oh, man, I don't know. Looking for their schedule. They're non they go to The reason I say that is they're at Washington game one. Well, that's uh, Would that count? Again, no, because... Because they're Boise. It's Boise State. They've beaten the Oregons. Obviously, OU's put them on the map. They they play in these games. They play good in these games. Even when they lose, they have chances to win, it feels like. What was that one they played down like in Atlanta? Anywho... I don't know, maybe you're beating a top 10 team and unranked beating a top 10 in their stadium. I, I would maybe consider that an upset, but then if I go, oh, it's Boise? Yeah, oh. that's the thing. Well, never mind. No one's shocked about that. I mean, I, I think, what if Colorado were to beat TCU? I... I I, I mean, I would fall in my chair no, shocked. I don't, yeah. Because I don't think, I think Colorado will be relevant. Not this year. But not this year. Yeah, I me mean, neither. I think this is a process when he's kind of cleaning out house and we look after the spring game, everybody defected. But he's bringing in his, his guys. So I, it's not that's not an overnight process. Kind of was at USC, but. Anyways, but on the other side of it, though, you'd be shocked, but I'd be, well, it's Dion. Oh, I just don't think, and, I mean, and, I think TCU is going to blow them away, completely away. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it wouldn't be kind of what the question is because it's not the little guy. You know, it's a power five school, for goodness sakes. But I, th- I, I think yeah, I think the question is what little G five school right. could come in and so that's where I would pull say, off an upset. Yeah, like Boise. So they would count in that regard. They're just they're way more known than what App State was. When that first when that Michigan. question was was first asked just moments ago, I looked the, the first team I went to look at their non conference. App State. No. A oh. and M. I was like, who are you oh. gonna lose to this <laughs> year? <laughs> And it's they should win the games that they sh- well everyone thought they should beat Appalachian. Go two at Miami. Yeah, that's one that's going to be tough. But that doesn't but, count. I mean, New Mexico. Oh, was it Louisiana Monroe? You know who else loses their games November, like this? Their November game, Abilene Christian. Oh, come on, they should be winning those. You know who else loses games like this? But you don't remember it as much because they're so forgettable. Kansas State. Wasn't it just a, a, last year? Was it last year that they lost? Well, you know what? I think they lost. Did they lose to Tulane? And everybody's like, "Oh my God, you lost to Tulane!" And then it turned was la- that last was that last year? year? I think yeah, it was. Yeah, they lost seventeen to ten to Tulane. That's right, what it was. Right and, before the OU. Game. That's right. Yes, yes. And I'll admit, it got my guard down. I thought Kansas State coming to Norman after losing to Tulane. Yeah, I, I knew they had one of those. And they they do they've done that before too to to a, more of a directional school like what uh, the question was. Well, didn't they lose to? Well, it's like North Dakota State and then beat OU a couple um, years ago. Not North Dakota State. That's where he came from. South South Dakota. Dakota. Yeah, they lost to one of those. I'm looking. Was it 2020? No. 19, 2019. I'm going back. Ah, uh, come on. It was before nineteen. Yeah, maybe, it was, maybe it was Kansas. There. Maybe it was Kansas. That I lost feel like Kansas. Dakota. Well, they lose to everybody. I, th- I thought it was Kansas State losing one of those games. Well, they beat South Dakota twenty-seven to twenty-four. They maybe almost it was got a, beat. Maybe it was a close one. That was an eighteen. Maybe it was one of those scares where it was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. The next thing you know, they beat the Sooners. 
We'll be back to wrap up the Garrison Financial Friday next. Hello, my name is Scott Garrison. You may remember me as Scott the Barber or just as Ron and Carla's son. I've been involved in our community since opening Scott's Barbershop on the southeast corner of 3rd and Main in 1998. Now I'm back in the same building as Garrison Financial. I started investing in my 20s. I invested through the dot-com crash and the Great Recession. I started caring for other people's money in 2018, and I truly enjoy sitting down with my clients, understanding their wants and needs, as well as what keeps them up at night. Whether my friends just want me to invest a little of their savings or want me to work with their tax and legal professionals to strive towards optimal efficiency, we can do it all. I believe communication is key to helping my clients reach their goals. For if we are faithful over a few things, we shall be given more. Contact me at scott at soonerwealth.com. Security is offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member of FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Garrison Financial and Cambridge are not affiliated. This communication is strictly intended for individuals residing in the states of Colorado, Nevada, Oklahoma, and Texas. No offers may be made or accepted from any resident outside this specific states referenced. Cambridge does not offer tax and legal advice. The skinny on sports. You can't say on the air. Don't worry, nobody's listening anyway. Welcome back. Skinny on sports, 98.1 FM. The Sports Animal wrapping up a Garrison Financial Friday here in studio. Don't forget tonight, Big Elk TV, 630 scrimmage up in El Reno. Going to have a season preview for you with the game going on behind you. Got some interviews, some kids from the media day the other day. Uh, so, Jared, Daniel, and I will be there hanging out at El Reno. It is Garrison Financial Friday. That means it's uh, Scotty G time. He wasn't able to be with us today out there supporting a good cause at the golf course. Um, he loves to work with your with your uh, accountants and streamline all the tax ramifications, all the different returns that need to be filed. Very good at that. Like I said, full financial planning. He'll shop the open market to bring you the best value on your life insurance and your investment. Scott at SoonerWealth.com is his email address. 124 North Main Street right here in Elk City is his physical address. Quick thoughts on the uh, Thunder schedule release. Are there just a, a couple of games that you can't wait to see from teams for the Thunder, is it more matchups for the Thunder? You know, personal matchups, oh, yeah. individual matchups. What are you, what are you looking forward? Uh, to? I'm looking forward to I think like the third or fourth game of the year, a Sunday afternoon game. Because last night I'm scrolling through trying to find those are the fun ones to go to for me. In that that first Sunday afternoon game, actually the they only have two, the fourth game of the year and the very last game of the year in April. But it's against Denver. Denver coming to town. Those home sun, opener. Home, home opener. Those Sunday night, Sunday afternoon games, the crowds can be incredible for some reason. And the host, Denver. So that one stands out. The uh, Overall, the in-season tournament is intriguing through pretty much the month of November, Tuesdays and what, Fridays. And with the Thunder uh, getting in the pool, same pool with San Antonio, an upstart Sacramento team, Golden State, uh, and then the first game in this tournament, pool play game, is against San Antonio. You know, you got Wimby against Chet Holmgren. Hopefully, everyone's healthy and 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 overall, just like I'm sure you are too, like a lot of Thunder fans, just excited to see Chet and SGA and all of them. This is the iteration of the Thunder team that's been building towards for the last three or four years, ever since the Paul George trade. So anxious to get it going and it and it's evident the nation is paying attention as many national televised games that are uh that are slated for and what if there could be more because of where they could be in standings and what certain games could mean they could flex in some more national televised games so it's going to be i'm looking forward to the year the the vegas hasn't won in more games than i thought they would now it's, it's like 43 and a half yeah. which is a, a four game jump from last year See, that doesn't seem like a ton but it it is yeah, I, I can't wait to watch Chet and, and Wimbanyama. I think that's a natural one, right, to see some of the stuff. If you're watching Twitter videos from different runs that they're going through, different guys are in different places playing pickup basketball. You know, you saw, see, saw one Chet and KD just giving it to each other. Yeah, that was cool. And it's like, wait a minute, what? I wonder if he – I think we have an expectation of what he could be just based on a little bit of Gonzaga, his size, 
uh, maybe he's more I, – I don't know. I can't wait to watch. I don't think there's any doubt he's a plus-plus defender as far as protecting the rim. He's already that. Yeah. Third game of the year. I said fourth game. But, yes. Let's say here's, will Chet primarily be a spot-up shooter in the pick-and-roll? I don't know. It looks like he can do more than that, at least in that setting. Now, an NBA game is totally different than that, but maybe he has maybe he has a little bit more um, offensive upside than what mm-hmm. what you might have thought originally. Mm-hmm. I'm a little disappointed. I thought they might be able to sneak into Christmas Day with the excitement of a young team with SGA especially being the first team all NBA guy. I thought they might be able to to sneak in there into the Christmas day. They weren't able to. Uh so that was a little disappointing for me on the schedule cuz I really thought they that we might see the Thunder's return to Christmas day. I think we're we're a year away. Maybe de- so. Depending on how they look this year. Yeah, you might be right. But I just thought, you know, with with SGA making the play in and then also the chat factor actually being able to see him thought that might happen here's a question i just saw on the uh on x can you tell me the only team in the nba that's never played on christmas day sacramento nope they played denver nope they probably played last year i didn't realize it. well they played thunder at one time in that run too oh, did they? back in the day yeah who is it the hornets the charlotte hornets have never played an NBA. Have never played a Christmas Day game. NBA on ESPN just tweeted that out. I just saw it. Well, get better. Maybe new ownership will help that. So anyhow, no, I, the Thunder stuff is cool. The, the midseason tournament. I still haven't really figured out what the point of it is yet, other than giving the guys a chance to win some more money, which that doesn't excite me at all. Okay, midseason is kind of funny because you're about a month in and they start it. Yeah. Um. I I think maybe it's in a it's a ploy to not rest players and not set players. But if you're going to do that, maybe have it right before the All Star break or something. Yeah, no, that's the thing. You're getting into February, into March, where you know it's almost like the playoffs. Would that be confusing? People like, oh, there's playoffs. Oh, the playoffs have started. No, they haven't. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I just don't know what the I need to correct myself. I don't I know mi- what the point is. I missed a Sunday game. February 11th, they have Sacramento at 2 in the afternoon. That's a Sunday. So they got three Sunday afternoon games. And that could be a good game, too. I mean, like if the, if the play-in winner or the midseason tournament winner was guaranteed a playoff spot, okay, I get it. I see what you're doing there. Mm-hmm. When they're just getting 500 grand a piece, eh, I don't know how excited I'm going to be about that. I really don't. But I will tell you this. Do they do this stuff in the international game? Yeah, it's soccer. Sure, soccer. I meant like yeah. Euro League and stuff. I don't know. European I mean, basketball. It's, this is this just screams I want to be like soccer from Adam Silver. Which, listen, I want to be like soccer for college football. I want to relegate teams, so maybe I'm becoming a soccer snob too. <laughs> Everybody have a great weekend. Don't forget Big Elk TV tonight, 630. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way back. Goodbye. It's almost here. In motion is Patton. It's going to be that trap play to Garbarino up the middle. That's a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Big Elks! Cooper Garbarino, 77 yards. We're closing in on the start of Big Elk football, which means Big Elk TV will be on the air before you know it. Wynn and Garza are the running backs. Jones under center. Austin, snap, turn, hand off to win. Jaden piles toward. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. You'll be able to watch and see if Coach Maynard's brown and white clad Elks can continue their winning ways. Snap back, play action, lobs it toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks.
Tucker Garza. To get your business on the Big Elk TV screen, call 225-9696 or stop by our office at 220 South Pioneer. 